So the very first of the five principles that we're going to be talking about here is uniformity with God's will. One of the biggest questions that I get from young men is, Elliot, what do I do in my life? What path do I take? What is my purpose here? And it seems like such an existential question only because we have so much confusion, so many opportunities and so many distractions in our lives. The fact is that what you're meant to do is usually very obvious. I like to use the word revelation, not in the way that it's used in the Bible, but in a way that is very practical for us. God is constantly revealing to you his will for your life based on what's happening right in front of you. It's so crazy how many times the very job we really need and, and the person that we really need to be with or the opportunity that's just the perfect one for us we're so busy looking outside or above and beyond it that we don't catch it. Nine times out of 10, the very thing that you are supposed to do that is the best thing for you, it might not be the best thing for your neighbor, might not be the best thing for your friends, other people might not think it's the best thing for you, and damn sure most of our egos wanna find something far more grandiose than what's sitting right in our own backyard, but nine times out of 10, your path is very obvious because it's revealed to you in the circumstances of your life. You are born a certain gender, a certain race, in a certain country at a certain time because those all provide the circumstances from which you are going to thrive best. It's not a mistake that you have the parents that you have. It's not a mistake that you live in the country that you have. It's not even a mistake that you have either the lack or abundance of resources. All of those things are exactly as they should be for what? For the salvation of your soul, the edification of your soul. You're becoming the strongest version of yourself, which is a very, very subjective thing, meaning that you could see someone else over there who is really living their best life. But their path, based on their circumstances, based on the gifts that they've been even given, are totally different. But you're so busy looking over there, or daydreaming, or scrolling through Instagram, and wanting something that you don't have, that you miss it. You miss it. There is a great story that, um, that Earl Nightingale tells in his book, Lead the Field. And you could look it up, it's probably on YouTube, it's very old. It's called Acres of Diamonds, Acres of Diamonds. And so there's a story about this African farmer, so it goes, who is living on a plot of land and he's not really making much money with his land. He's not really, the farm is not really producing, but he's been hearing about these people who in a foreign land, maybe another country, you know, several miles away, uh, are buying these plots of lands and finding diamonds, right? In Africa, right? They can find diamonds. And so he hears about this. He's like, wow, really? So he's got his, say he's got 40 acres. And he's like, well, I'm going to sell this land because I'm hearing about all of the acres of diamonds that are over there. And so he sells his land and he goes off. Another man buys his land, a humble man who's really not looking for much but to cultivate the land. But one day, several years after he's on his land, a friend comes over and he's kicking some rocks over by the river and he picks one up and he says to his friend, hey, buddy, do you know what this is? And his friend looks at it. He's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just some kind of ugly black rock that's just hanging around. I have a bunch of them all over the place. You know, I don't know how to get rid of them. And his friend is like mind blown. He's like, no, bro, these are diamonds in the rough. These are worth millions of dollars. And so the moral of the story is that the guy that had the first plot of land was so busy daydreaming and thinking about what other people had that he didn't realize that he was on his own acres of diamonds. The very thing that you have, the very thing that you are, the very circumstances that you in are right now is your acres of diamonds. That's uniformity with God's will as opposed to uniformity with my will. And my will is corrupted. Your will is corrupted. Our wills are corrupted. Our wills are corrupted by all kinds of advertising, all kinds of uh, um, comparing, contrasting, listening to other people, the news, social media. 
The easiest way to understand God's will for you in your life is to stop and look at what you've got. Stop and look at where you are. Your feet are standing on acres of diamonds. Observe what is being revealed to you rather than what you want. Principle number one.